Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,923. Today's show could very well save your life. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia, with a very special returning guest by the name of Jerry Cox. Jerry, welcome back to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am. All right. So today, we're going to get real serious today, because what Jerry shared with us about a year ago, almost to the date, was a book that he's written. And I want to give him a proper introduction because he's back to share more about this uh, airbag debacle that is never ending, ongoing, starting to feel like the COVID debacle that we're dealing with. Uh, Both can be deadly if you don't treat them with respect. And uh, I wanted to have Jerry back to talk about what he's learned since then. So let me give you a proper introduction. And I'm going to dive into a series of very different questions to help our listeners learn more about this, because what we talk about today Today could very well save you or a passenger or loved one's life. So here we go. Jerry Cox is a Washington, D.C. based lawyer and crisis communications advisor with 40 years of experience with airbags and automobiles. He played a substantial role in implementing the airbag requirement and has represented numerous auto industry organizations, including Used Car Dealers Association, Auto Auctions, Carfax, and State Motor Vehicle Administrators. The Takata Corporation hired him back in 2014 to help explain a problem the company was having with their airbags. We've heard that name. They were blowing up in drivers' faces, shooting shrapnel, and killing or severely injuring people. Jerry wrote a book titled Killer Airbags, The Deadly Secret Automakers Don't Want You to Know, how they turned into the biggest recall of any consumer product in history. Today, he returns for some potentially life-saving updates on this airbag situation. So first and foremost, Jerry, thanks for getting back in touch with me and being here to share what you had to share. This is so important. I wish I had better news. Yeah, I know. And this is what has me pretty darn frustrated. So let's start this way. Uh, You're back to update us on what's going on after a year now. And unfortunately, things have not improved. They've only gotten worse. So let's begin at the beginning. Why? Why are millions of airbags dangerous? And how many vehicles are we talking about now? When Takata decided they could make more money by selling airbags that used a really cheap propellant, that is to say the thing that inflates the airbags, the auto manufacturers were crazy about the opportunity to spend less on their airbags. And they put the Takata airbags around the world in 100 million vehicles. Wow. I mean, that's huge. Now, explain a little bit about this. It has to do with ammonium nitrate and its uh, ability to deteriorate in a relatively short period of time. Yes, and not to get into chemistry class, the trick is that with an explosive, if it has a bigger surface area than what you intended, when uh, when you ignite it, it's going to react differently from when it has a smaller amount of surface area. What it is supposed to do inside the inflator in the airbag is to burn really fast and produce a gas that gets shot into the airbag that makes it inflate so quickly. But if it's got too much surface area because it has deteriorated over time because it's crumbled like an aspirin sitting on your uh, bathroom uh, vanity, uh, if it does that, it explodes. And it really is a hand grenade. Yeah, it's frightening. You know, we saw that disaster in the Middle East uh, when that... uh, Somewhat similar chemical, I believe, Uh, nitrate, ammonium nitrate had been stored for way too long in those buildings. And then finally something set it off and it set off a boom larger than I think anything other than a, a nuclear bomb and killed so many people and damaged so many people. Right now, according to what you've sent me, there are 44 million cars on American roads that still have an ammonium nitrate powered Takata airbag inflator. Is that is that right? 44 million? That is exactly right. And uh, some of them have been recalled. Of the ones that have been recalled, there are still 14 million on the roads. 
that have not been repaired, that number has skyrocketed since the beginning of this year. It has gone from 10 million to 14 million, despite this supposed effort to get them off the, off the roads. They've actually gone up 40% this year, the number that are still on the road. Well, I can tell you, I've had this, I've experienced this firsthand, luckily not an airbag blowing up in my face, but I had two BMWs that had Takata airbags. Uh, I got recall notices. It took a long time, months and months for those parts, the new parts to come in, took the cars in, had to take them in at different times because they didn't even have enough bags to do both bags. They would do one side and then the other. And then I got another notice and they said, sorry, those bags we put in, they're not good either. And we went through the whole thing again. What happened? Well, for one thing, you might see those recalled yet again because of the 30 million uh, vehicles that have Takata airbags in them that have never been recalled. Back in 2015, the government gave Takata a pass on those vehicles because uh, they added a desiccant in the same way that you might have some silica in your medicine uh, bottle to keep your pills from breaking down. Uh, they put that type of uh, desiccant inside the inflator and decided that, well, I guess those are safe. And without any real explanation, any good scientific explanation as to what, how, how that made them safe or how long it made them safe, what they also did, and those, you know, so those 30 million, of those 30 million, 25 million cars are out there on the road right now that were outfitted with those desiccated inflators when they were built. But there are another 5 million cars that have already been recalled, and yet they were replaced with these desiccated inflators. So if your repair part was one of those, be ready for yet another recall on your cars. You oh. thought you were done, didn't you? Oh, yeah, uh, and thought I was safe. That's the bigger problem here is because in some cases, not every case, but in some cases, when these things ignite and go off, they don't just throw gas. They throw shrapnel. Is that right? The inflator housing, the casing is made out of steel and it uh, blows up just like an IED. You know, we thought we were done with Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, you've got it right there in your steering wheel. Ooh, okay. That's frightening. Let me go back in time a little bit here because I want you guys who are listening today that may be going, well, how can this be? That's a huge number. Why aren't we being protected? Can you give us a quick recap? Because you worked for Takata. They hired you to help them. And then as you went through this process and you were involved in, in our federal government in this whole process, things went topsy-turvy. Could you give us a little recap of that so that it adds, not that you need credibility, but maybe people didn't hear your MI talk a year ago about this. So the they understand we're talking to a guy today, Jerry Cox, who is deep in the bowels of this whole airbag issue. He knows of what he's talking. Can you give us a little background? Yes, and being deep in the bowels, I mean, that kind of tells you that it really smelled. Because uh, what Takata did, they knew early on that uh, there was a defect in uh, by the, that using ammonium nitrate really was a very bad choice and that their product was defective. But not that many people got killed initially. So in the early 80s, after they started putting these in people's cars, it took until the mid middle of you know 2006, 2007 before you saw a number of people uh, getting blown up and hideous, hideous injuries and several deaths, but still just a handful. And the media kind of gave Takata a pass to the extent that they acted as if people had been struck by lightning. But the very idea that your safety device killed you uh, is just an astonishing thing that people have just glossed over. And um, by the time we get into the early teens, um, all of a sudden uh, it's getting harder and harder to uh, cover that up uh, and to have some explanation for the media. But the, the Japanese approach to a situation like this, and there's an, a Japanese expression, uh, if it stinks, put a lid on it. And uh, the American executives by 2014 were starting to realize that that lid was going to get blown off and they'd better, you know, they were going to have some splaining to do and they'd better be prepared to do that. And that's where I came in with them. Yeah, exactly. What are all the marks that these bags are in, are in the, the different kinds of cars? Well, as a matter of fact, for the first time, there is now available uh, at killerairbags.com, there is available a list that will tell you which BMWs have 
the the uh, desiccated inflators. Mm. That is something that has never been available before, uh, and suddenly it's out. And one can take a look at the list and see whether uh, you can see whether your car received one of those as original equipment. And if it did, it's never been recalled. But there's a separate list that shows BMWs that were recalled and that had the desiccated inflators uh, used as the supposed repair. And that list now, for the first time ever, is available for your listeners uh, to go and check. And if they go to killerairbags.com, they'll find both of those lists. I'll make sure I put a link that to that on uh, Jerry's show notes page, but easy to remember, killerairbags.com. Uh, you can check that out and see if your car is on that list. Now, if somebody finds their vehicle on that list, what do they do? <laughs> That's a really good question, because first of all, uh, you would think that NHTSA would be of some help. Uh, but to the contrary, I called the NHTSA Motor Vehicle Safety Hotline uh, two hours ago and asked them exactly that question. How can I find out whether my car has one of those Takata airbags in it? And the answer I got was, we do not have that information. You have to go to your manufacturer. Mm, thanks a lot. And NHTSA is, what does that acronym stand for? Yeah, that's the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. It was created by the 1966 legislation that Ralph Nader sort of created and, and, and sponsored uh, back in the mid-60s uh, with the idea that somehow uh, government bureaucrats were needed to uh, protect us. But with regard to these airbags, this is entirely up to you. The only thing that you can do if you find out, if you find your make, model, and year on one of those lists, the only thing you can do is to keep checking to see when a recall is announced for that particular make and model of car. And you can, on the NHTSA site, supposedly sign up for a notice so that when your VIN pops up, it will send you an email. Now, I wouldn't personally trust that, um, but that's about all you can do is check on a regular basis manually, put your VIN in, and you can also find a place to do that at killerairbags.com. You type in the 17-digit VIN. All of your listeners know where to find the VINs for their cars, um, so they're at a big advantage uh, over just your average uh, vehicle owner, your average, average um, consumer, and particularly a consumer of a less expensive uh, automobile, if you're talking about a 2006 Honda or something like that, I don't suppose many of your listeners are driving those, but they might be putting their kids in them and uh, they'd better be checking. And for that matter, because of this whole issue about the, the 25 million that, that had the desiccated inflators as original equipment, if NHTSA does move forward and recall those, and I really think they should do that, should have done that already, if they do go ahead and do that, you could be talking about cars as recent uh, of as recent a vintage as 2019. Uh, so you might not you might think you're clear of this problem that you don't need to worry about it for what you're driving or what you're putting your kids in. But the only way you will find out is to go in and check. Um, but of course, NHTSA, like I said, won't even tell you um, about anything that hasn't actually been recalled. And they've basically made no issue out of the fact, have done nothing about the fact that there's been a 40% increase in the number of vehicles this year <clears throat> that have been recalled and not fixed. They have done nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go down the path of talking about government and how uh, how helpful they can be to towards all of us. When you were on the show before, we talked a little bit about this recall issue. And typically when you get a recall, they'll send a little, almost difficult to notice tiny piece of paper, like a postcard in the mail, black and white. Uh, it looks like an advertisement. There's no giant words. I mean, it's really nondescript. Now, for most of my listeners and myself, I'm a car guy. We're all car people, and we would notice things like that. But for most people, they probably just get lost in the shuffle and end up thrown away. The thing that I find interesting is that the manufacturers aren't reaching out to tell their customers that there's a problem. And in some cases, we talked about this before, when you take your car in for service, wouldn't you think that's the time that they go, by the way, Mr. Green, we need to talk to you about your airbags. But some manufacturers aren't even doing that. Well, that's right. Well, I think the answer to your question is this. The government has left consumers behind. It is your problem to figure this out. And as I said, when I called 
uh, NHTSA this morning, their hotline, and asked uh, whether I can find out that whether my car has a Takata airbag in it that has not been recalled. They denied that any list of those vehicles exists, but I have that list. I can look at that list, and I guarantee you that if I call a car manufacturer and ask them whether my car has a airbag in it that has not been recalled, they're going to tell me that they don't have that information either. I hope you will give that a try. I can send you by email the phone number for the hotline. And uh, so if I were you, I would uh, look at my uh, car, Mm -hmm. make sure you know have the make, model, and year right there in front of you, call them up and ask them, uh, does that one have a Takata airbag in it that has not been recalled? And they will tell you there is no such information. They have no such information, and you should contact your the manufacturer of your car. And I guarantee you, if you call the manufacturer of your car, they will not give you that information either. The only way you will be able to get that information will be to go to killerairbags.com and look at the list uh, that uh, is posted there. Wow. Well, what I'll do is I'll put that phone number so that our listeners who want to go through this, these steps can do that for calling on it's uh, and asking him that question. Uh, I would assume the person at the other end, much like when you call almost any government entity, the poor person at the other end is not duly supplied with all the information they need. Well, but remember though, this is supposed to be their vehicle safety hotline. <laughs> yeah. They pay people to man this thing. I'm sorry, person this thing uh, on a 24 hour basis. Uh, and the idea is supposed to be that calling that hotline can save your life. But if they're going to deny the existence of a list that you have in your hand, they're telling you it doesn't exist and you have it right in front of you, I would strongly suggest that you should not rely on their advice. Yeah, I would think so. I, who's in charge of NHTSA? Like who's, who's been appointed to that position? The head of it. The Biden administration has not even mentioned the name of anyone to run the agency. The Trump administration never appointed anyone to run that agency. So that's basically telling you as a consumer how much the federal government, Democrats and Republicans, care about you. Trump appointed nobody four years. You've got almost a year now with Biden. That makes five years that this extremely important consumer agency has had no leadership whatsoever. Wow. Oh, that makes me feel even better. Thanks, Jerry. I told you I wanted to give you better news. Yeah, Uh, I was feeling so good about what's going on right now around around the government. But uh, now I feel even better. Thank you for that. But that's the fundamental message. The good news is, well, the bad news is that as a consumer, and as I said, your listeners are very uh, tuned in, not just to program, but they're tuned into what's happening in the world, I'm sure, and they can protect themselves in ways other people can't. Because for one thing, they know where to find their VIN. For another, they know when they hear this, they will know where to go to find out whether their car is likely to get recalled because it has that other type of Takata inflator in it. Um, The thing that I find really horrific, and uh, this was on Trump, You know, this is one of those things where you can blame Trump, and that is that the in 2015, NHTSA created or entered into a deal with Takata. I would say that the only real reason for it was to keep Takata from going bankrupt, Mm -hmm. and we know how well that worked out. Takata went bankrupt within two years after this deal was struck. But the deal was pretty simple. It was all right. You're telling us Takata that the desiccant makes these safe, so we're not going to recall those 30 million right now, we're going to have you recall the other 45 million that were in the United States. We'll see how that goes. But by the end of 2019, you must prove to us that the desiccant really makes a difference, that it makes them safe, that they're not defective if they have the desiccant in them. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, end of 2019 came and went. There was no word from the agency whatsoever. And then in the spring of 2020, NHTSA announced that they had, in secret, evaluated reports that they had received um, from, guess who, the auto manufacturers. Uh, And uh, they looked at those reports, and the reports said, well, of course, these are just fine and dandy. Not a thing, (laughs) nothing wrong with these. You don't need to recall these. And uh, and NHTSA announced uh, that uh, without any attribution, there was no 
agency administrator. There was nobody who really took responsibility for this, but they made the announcement that they were satisfied and they weren't going to recall um, those 30 million cars. The requirement was that the manufacturers, and Staccata's out of the picture, the requirement was that the manufacturers prove them safe or recall them. That was the deal. The burden was on them to prove them safe or recall them. And the people they didn't consult who were left completely out of this discussion were the engineers who designed those inflators. Jeez. Wow. Every single one of the engineers who was involved in designing those inflators who you know, are still actively looking at this reviewed the material that was submitted in secret. It finally was released after the decision was made. It got released. Those engineers looked at it and said, this is garbage. And one of those engineers received a whistleblower award. He received a substantial amount of money for turning tail uh, on Takata. And that man, a guy named John Keller, has been using that money to go out and buy inflators so that he can test them. And he has some absolutely appalling high-speed video of what happens, what it looks like when a desiccated inflator blows up. And guess what? It looks just like an undesiccated inflator when it blows up. It is a hand grenade. Oh, goodness. Wow. Well, again, listeners, I encourage you to go to killerairbags.com. You can scroll down to the check recall status, type in your VIN. VINs are very easy to find. For those few listening that maybe don't know where to find your VIN, you can just look at your driver's side windshield. Usually you can see it right through that or in your owner's manual uh, or on the uh, inside post of your vehicle. Or if you still can't find it, uh, call your dealership and ask them where it is and they'll help you get that but put that in there and see if you're at risk and then from there once they determine okay i've got a car that needs a new airbag what's the next step the repairs are free you just need to contact a dealer not necessarily your dealer but a dealer who who sells that type of new car um you know if your car is a tesla you're going to getting in touch with a tesla dealer uh, and uh, they are obligated to replace the uh, airbag for free. Now, for right now, they might very well replace your undesiccated inflator with a desiccated inflator. Mm -hmm. That's still going on today. And all you can do is ask your dealer for specifics about what they're replacing it with, and don't just take their word for it that they've put something safe in there. Yeah. You know, when you were on the show before, we talked about your book titled Killer Airbags, The Deadly Secret Automakers Don't Want You to Know. Um, I'm going to put a link to that. Yeah, it's a really great read, and it goes into much more detail of what we're talking about today. Of course, written by our guest today, Jerry Cox, who was in the depths of this. We'll say the bowels again because it was a stinky mess uh, that uh, many have tried to put a lid on, but uh, it just keeps seeping out. Uh, I would encourage you to get a copy of this book. It's, it's fascinating reading. It'll make your head shake um, and uh, make you wonder. But the whole idea, the whole reason I wanted Jerry back today was really to let my listeners know uh, what was really going on so that you can be educated. And then you can share this with your friends that maybe aren't as car savvy and that perhaps haven't been told or heard anything about this. Again, could literally save somebody's life. So uh, take advantage of, of what we've shared with you today and use it. Um, what are some of the, are there some other websites where people can go and learn more about this? You men mentioned this engineer. Uh, does he have a website where people can go and learn more about what he's discovered? No, what he has done though, is he has um, filed what are called Freedom of Information Act requests. And over the last 16 months, NHTSA has insisted that there is no such list. And John found the list. Wow. It was on the internet. He found it through a Google search and he wrote back to the lawyers who had been swearing up one side and down the other at NHTSA. He wrote back to them and said, that list that you wouldn't give me because it doesn't exist, well, please take a look at the attached PDF and explain to me, you know, why you kept telling me it doesn't exist. So he has created quite a record um, in, um, you know, basically showing the agency, I don't want to say lying about this, but that probably is appropriate. They certainly are providing misinformation about it, and he has proven uh, through his um, 
doggedness and by using that money. I mean, he could have gone out and bought himself a very nice boat um, or a brand new car with the money that he received as a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. Uh, But instead of doing that, he has dedicated himself to trying to protect consumers and make it possible for your listeners to do things like go to a website or they could, you know, they could do a Google search and see what comes up. But yeah, I'm making it easy for everybody by posting it on KillerAirbags.com. And now your listeners can go there and find out not only whether their vehicle is under recall today, they can also get a sense of how likely it is their vehicle will be recalled either again or for the first time tomorrow. That's an important point. I'll remind the listeners here, go back, you know, put on your your calendar, a reminder uh, every couple of months, go back and check it again, because this is a moving dynamic. Things keep changing. And as we said at the beginning, it's only gotten worse and more cars are out there that are at risk. So again, this is a very different show today, but I really appreciate you coming back to educate the listeners here. Uh, it's so important. And again, listeners, uh, I'll put a link to that. Again, easy to find, killerredbags.com. You could go and check it, check it again, share it with friends. Social media is a great way to put this out there so that uh, we can help more people understand how to protect themselves uh, from this uh, debacle. Uh, wow. It's absolutely incredible. Anything else you wanted to touch on before I let you go today, Jerry? I would just want to stress that uh, if you're looking at things like engineering analyses and you have two different sources and one of those sources is being paid to provide their opinion, and in this case with the respect to these 30 million vehicles, the auto industry paid experts to provide a report that made it sound as if these desiccated inflators are not defective. And you have their opinion, but as they say, consider the source. And then you have the opinion of John Keller and some other folks who have posted things on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, who have absolutely no incentive to gild any lilies. I mean, they um, are doing this because, like me, they feel at least a little bit responsible for the situation that we have today. And they have a conscience and they want to make people realize uh, how the agency has had the uh, wool pulled over its eyes, how the agency has been asleep at the wheel. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist uh, using yeah. that one. Yeah. But they have been. And now, as I said, even two hours ago, they were falsely telling me that there is no way for me to find out whether my car has a desiccated Takata inflator in it. That is absolutely not true. Um, and that's the official word from the agency. Uh, Mark, I think if you were to call and your listeners, if they were to call the agency and ask for their public affairs people, at least for a while, they're going to continue to insist that the list that your listeners will have in their hand in front of them, they will insist that it does not exist. So the bottom line on all this is as a vehicle owner, it is entirely up to you to protect yourself. Nobody else is helping really to um, get this resolved. And it really is up for every individual vehicle owner to deal with the issues with respect to their own cars. There you go. Listeners, take a moment today, uh, go to the website, put in your VIN and learn, educate, perhaps save a life here today. So important. Jerry, I really appreciate you coming back and sharing an update on this. I hope the next time I have you back, the update is much more positive and better. But uh, today, I hope that we helped some people and quite possibly saved a few lives uh, in the in doing so. I want to thank you for uh, the continued efforts that you're making to make people aware. Uh, that's the key, being aware and having the right information. Until you and I talk again, Jerry, stay safe out there, and I'll see you down the road. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. 
and be sure to use the code CARS yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!